Hi, I'm Dan Osborne, webmaster of DaveOsborne.com. I wrote a stair calculator with my brother Dave's help, of course. He's the expert in carpentry. That will help you lay out your stair stringers. This is how to use that stair calculator. Dave and I drew this diagram to show the parts of a staircase. The total rise is the vertical distance between the surface of the upper floor and the surface of the ground, sidewalk, or lower floor that the last step will be on. The total run is the horizontal distance between the edge of the upper floor and the end of the bottom step. Each stair step has two basic measurements. The horizontal or flat part of the stair is called the run. The vertical height difference between two stairs is called the rise. The headroom is the vertical distance of the ceiling to the step required to have clearance between the top of one's head and the surface of the ceiling when passing through the floor opening going down a staircase. Most building codes set this dimension at 78 to 80 inches. Floor opening is the length of upper floor required to be removed so the headroom is correct. Floor thickness is from the surface of the upper floor to the surface of the ceiling below the floor. The first step in building a set of stairs is to measure the total rise of the stairs. This is your most important measurement. Your entire staircase depends on getting the total rise accurate. Our stair calculator uses either inches or centimeters. If you're going to use inches, you will need to use only inches, not feet and inches. Convert any feet measurements to inches by multiplying the number of feet by 12, since there are 12 inches to every foot. Better yet is to measure only in inches as you go along, so you don't have to convert the feet. You can enter fractions of an inch into the calculator or decimals of an inch. Most tapes are measured into sixteenths of an inch, so it will probably be easier for you to enter fractions directly rather than convert them into decimals. When you enter a fraction, always separate the fraction from the whole number with a space. Use the forward slant to separate the top number and bottom number of the fraction, otherwise the calculator won't know it's a fraction and you'll get incorrect results. The printout of the results will say exactly what the numbers are that were used for the calculation, so you can check those when you look over the printout. I made an easy drop-down list you can use to select the rise and run of typical stairs that Dave gave me. You can just select one from this list. You can also enter in specific measurements you'd like for the rise and run of your stairs. Do this also with the thickness of the tread you want to use on the staircase. Usually one inch plywood is used for stairs inside the house and 2x4 or 2x6 on outside steps. Again, you can enter in a specific tread thickness if you've got some odd sized lumber around you'd like to use. The tread thickness is important to know because you adjust how far down you're going to attach the stringer to the upper floor based on the tread thickness. Also, the first rise at the bottom of the stairs needs to be cut shorter than the other rises by the tread thickness. This stair calculator on DaveOsborne.com will figure all the measurements out for you and will be as accurate as the data you enter into it. The floor thickness is used if you need to know the length of the stair opening in the upper floor so a tall person doesn't bump his or her head walking down your stairs. The headroom is already set at the usual building code height. If the building code in your area allows a different height, you can change the headroom if you need to. When you've entered in all the measurements needed, the Calculate button is activated. Now you can click on the Calculate button and see all your measurements right away. If the total run that is calculated is too long for your space, you can try a steeper stair that uses up less floor space. Or you might have to relocate where you're going to put the stairs so they don't run into a wall at the bottom of the stairs. The calculator will give you the figures you need before you waste any time or materials. Once the calculations are done, you can print out the measurements and diagrams. If you make any changes, the print button gets dim again until you press the calculate button using the new numbers. This is just a safeguard to put in, so if you change any numbers, you'll always make sure you calculate before you print. The printout is in a different window. Page 1 shows a listing of the measurements you entered and the results of the calculations. Page 2 is a diagram of the stringer layout. These numbers on the edge of the board are the measurements from the end of the board where each step's nose is. Just hook your tape measure on this end of the board and go down the tape marking each of these measurements on the board. Then go back with your framing square and mark off each rise and run. Then cut out the stringer 
with your circular saw and handsaw or reciprocating saw. Once your stringer is cut, you install it into position as shown in the second diagram. Remember the first rise is on the box joist of the upper floor. You measure down from the surface of the upper floor the distance of the rise and the thickness of the tread. That point is where the top of the stringer should be fastened. If your stairs don't have many steps, then the diagram shows clearly this measurement. If your stairs have many steps, then a larger circle is added to the diagram that shows the details of the top step and where the top of the stringer goes. Refer to Dave's articles on how to build stairs for the methods used to attach the stringer to the upper floor. That is how to use the stair calculator on DaveOsborne.com. Play around with it. Enter in different quantities and press calculate to get an idea of how it works. You can't break anything, so feel free to experiment. Click the print results button also to see the diagrams the calculator makes. You can see these on your computer screen or you can print them out. Once you're satisfied that your measurements are accurate and the stairs will fit into the space you're planning for them, then print off the results and diagrams and refer to them as you lay out, cut, and place your stringers. If you haven't already done so, I invite you to visit our site for excellent articles on everything from how to build a shed to how to build a house, with information on remodeling also, like how to put a window into a wall, re-roofing a roof, and building furniture with full plans and instructions for many different projects.